How's it going everybody? Welcome to Sick Eric Tech. Today we're going to be talking about eight innovations or eight features that LG has brought to the smartphone industry. As we all know, LG has been gone for going over a year already. They dropped out of the mobile division and no longer making smartphones, but they did bring a lot of innovation to the smartphones that we have today. And if it wasn't for LG, we may not have these things or we probably would. Somebody else would probably just come up with it, but LG did it first. So let's go ahead and jump down into it before you before we get started, go ahead and subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified on future videos just like the one you're about to watch today. I know there's a lot of LG fans out there and we all want LG back. So we can do videos like this to sort of uh, remember LG and remember what they have done for us and for the smartphone industry. So the first one, I got a little cheat sheet here on my LG G8 and I'm using the LG wing to record this video, by the way. And uh, the first one is going to be the ultra wide angle camera. Yes, the feature that we have on a lot of smartphones today, even Apple have an ultra wide camera. And essentially what that does is that gives you a wider field of view for taking pictures. And that first started on the LG G5 in 2016. Remember that modular phone? Yes, LG put that on the G5. One of the first times doing it had a 130 degree field of view on it, guys. That's ridiculous. Most smartphones today come with a 120 degree field of view just because of that barreling effect, but I think we've gotten it down to where we could avoid that distortion. And like I said, it can be found on most smartphones. The V10 had a ultra wide on the front facing camera, which was pretty cool as well. And they did that on the first V10. And then of course the V20 came out with the dual, you know, dual um, cameras on the back with the ultra wide as well. They swapped it from the front to the back. So very, very cool. And uh, keep in mind that another feature was the first time they included laser autofocus was on the device as like the uh, G4, I believe, was the first time they included laser autofocus. And you, that can be found on a lot of smartphones today. That is uh, the, the Galaxy S22 Ultra has laser autofocus. A lot of devices do that. So very nice. LG did it first as far as the ultra wide camera goes and is an excellent feature for any smartphone today is that ultra wide camera manual camera mode and manual video mode now this was introduced first on the lg g4 i believe and uh the manual video mode was released on the lg v10 in 2015 you could of course you know adjust your iso and your shutter speed and things like that with manual video mode and you could control all your audio settings on there as well but camera mode no other device had manual camera modes, and a lot of them don't have them today. Samsung started doing it. Um, I don't think Apple does it. Uh, LG, or I'm sorry, uh, Pixel devices don't have a manual uh, video mode especially, but a lot of people are doing manual camera modes and pro mode is what you want to call it. And um, got a cat scratching over there. And LG did that first on the G4, and it's pretty cool. A lot of people love controlling all your settings when you're taking video and taking pictures to give you a more professional shot. So manual camera mode and manual video mode was uh, another feature. To audio, as we all know, audio was a huge factor with LG devices. A lot of them had uh, great audio and headphone jacks and LG started this whole quad DAC, which is a digital to analog converter for listening to music. It's very hi-fi, gives you hi-fi quality music, and a lot of audiophiles love that. And LG was the ones who did that first. I believe it was released on the V20 as far as having a quad DAC back in 2016. And the V10 had a DAC on there, but it wasn't a quad DAC. It was just a regular hi-fi DAC. And that gave us high quality audio on their smartphones. And the only way you could get a high quality audio was to buy an LG device, so fantastic that LG did that. And sadly, headphone jacks are no more, so I don't know if anybody else is gonna give us a quad DAC or hi-fi audio. There's going to be aspect ratios of displays. Now, 
As we all know, a lot of displays were coming in at 16 by nine, which is more of a wider display rather than a taller display. And LG started an 18 by nine uh, aspect ratio. I think it was on the G6. And uh, the first device that LG did with a 21 by nine aspect ratio, which is what we get today on a lot of smartphones, was back in 2009 with the LG BL40, which was the new chocolate device. And that device had a long uh, cinematic display. Granted, it was smaller, but back then it was new and nobody really seen anything like that. It gives you more of a cinematic longer display. And we get that on a lot of smartphones today now with that longer, taller aspect ratio. And LG did that back in 2009, guys. That was insane. So aspect ratios changed with LG. Uh, going on over to displays again. Uh, LG included the flexible OLED display, which is a POLED display. And that pretty much gives you opportunities to curve the display. And it pretty much, I guess, paves the way for Samsung with their foldable displays and stuff like that. And uh, LG did that first back with the uh, LG G Flex, which had that curved uh, display to sort of mold it to your face, which was pretty cool. And it allows you to just have more, um, I guess flexibility with the display you could have your curved edges which a lot of phones now have curved edges and it's a lighter display it's pretty much plastic and it's a little bit lighter than glass so they pretty much gave us that with the curved displays and providing that first flexible oled panel going on over to wireless charging yes qi wireless charging i think that's different than chi i don't know but they first introduced wireless charging on a Nexus device. Yes, the Nexus 4 back in 2012, a long time ago, came with a wireless charger. And as we all know, LG made a lot of the, the uh, Nexus devices and they included a wireless charger on there, which is pretty cool. And I think that was one of the first Android phones to include a wireless charger or to have wireless charging. I think another one was a, a Windows phone but this was technically the first Android device to include wireless charging. So that's pretty cool that LG did that first. Go on, on over to the big craze today, which is dual screens, foldable displays and flipping stuff and all of that just craziness. LG did that with the dual displays. As you all know, the LG G8X was offered with the dual screen display back when that came out. And that pretty much gives you more flexible uh, I guess functionality to where you could do stuff on one side and then have stuff running on the other side and then they continue that with the v50 the v60 the velvet and then of course the flippy swivel screen of the lg wing like i said i'm using that to record right now so they offered that dual screen opportunity to uh, multitask on our smartphones was first done on the lg g8 i believe zte also had the uh, foldable phone on there as well a lot of people have done it but uh lg was one of the first to do that with the lg g8x and last but not least is going on to the uh double tap to sleep and wake as we all know lg did have the whole knock on feature and knock off to where you tap your display it'll turn on your phone and you could also do the whole knock knock to unlock it as well but a lot of devices didn't have that back in the day and lg uh, first did that with some of their devices to give us that knock feature to pretty much tap on and tap off on your device, which I personally love. The Pixel devices, stock launcher doesn't really have a uh, tap to lock on there. So you have to install a third party launcher and Samsung picked it up, of course. You know, I don't know if Apple does that. I don't think Apple has anything like that, but it's pretty cool that you could just tap on your screen to turn it off and tap to turn it on. And keep in mind, everybody, LG did that first. So a lot of innovation LG has brought to the table as far as uh, features on smartphones that we have today. Of course, there have been some flops like the hand gesture on the infamous LG G8 to where you're pretty much acting like a wizard with your damn phone trying to get this thing to work. Total failure. LG has had some failures. Let's not forget that as well. But a lot of their stuff were successes and we wouldn't have so many things we had today if it wasn't for LG. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you found it useful, 
subscribe, like, and share, and I will see you next time down the road, guys. Peace, RIP LG.